Our first scripture lesson for today comes from Psalm 119, verse 10, from the New Revised Standard Version. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let the people say amen. 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 Our second passage of scripture comes from the book of Joshua, the sixth chapter. Listen for a word of God. Now Jericho was shut up inside and out because of the Israelites. No one came out and no one went in. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have handed Jericho over to you, along with its kings and soldiers. You shall march around the city, all the warriors circling the city once. Thus you shall do for six days, with seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, the priests blowing the trumpets. How cool is that to have the scripture come to life? All right, stay there because, well, the, the, <clears throat> while the um, trumpeter doesn't know this is happening because I just thought it up, we still need the trumpeters, and now we need all of you to be a part of this next part of scripture because this next verse is really cool too. It says, then when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great Shout. So that's going to be your part. After you hear the long sound of the trumpet, then you make a great shout. Now, not a shout like you would do in church. Hey, hey, right? I want to hear your shout like you're at a sporting event or like you're trying to call your child from down the neighborhood to come back home for dinner. I want to hear that kind of shouting. All right, are you people, are you ready? All right. And then they heard the long trumpet sound. Oh, man! Oh, man, I forgot to tell him. That kind of totally ruined it. All right, trumpeter. No, 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 that's not going to (laughs) work. One more time. You get one more chance. Stand up. I know, I just made it up. It's kind of funny. Okay, here we go. Awesome. Can you imagine being there in Jericho? Wouldn't that have been really cool to be a part of that day? Now you have been. All right. Okay. Oh, thanks. All right. That note to self, make better plans next time. But anyway, that was really cool. Okay, so that all happened. And then after that happened, what happened to the wall? It was going to what? They said it was going to fall down. Right. So... That was the word. Okay, so let's pick up, I don't know where it says on the screen. I have no idea where we are. So then, 
Joshua, son of Nun, summoned the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and have seven priests carry seven trumpets of ram's horns in front of the Ark of the Lord. To the people he said, Go forward and march around the city. Have the armed men pass on before the Ark of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I am amazed by this scripture. I would have been absolutely think it'd be so cool to be a part of what happened that day. For the people to be circling around to hear the word of the Lord say, go and circle. And then when that ram's horn would go off with one single shout, the walls come tumbling down. Now, I can only imagine that if if you weren't a part of the circling, that people might have thought they were crazy, right? Because they were out there doing this for six days. They walked around the city one time a day for six days. Who does that? And then on the seventh day, they were to do it seven times. Somebody watching might really wonder. But they knew that the Lord had spoken to them and that they were to do this And if they would follow the Lord's instructions, no obstacle would be too big. That the walls would come tumbling down. And that they could do anything with the power of the Lord who was with them and had commanded them to go. So I myself have been been wondering over the years, you know, does this circling things in prayer really work? Could it work in my own life too? It worked back then, but does God still speak to us, invite us to circle around obstacles, and does God come to meet us when we are faithful in doing that? So now twice in my life, I have been invited by God to circle things literally in prayer. Several years ago was the first time that it happened. God invited me to spend a week circling things in prayer. God said, I'm going to meet you at nine o'clock every morning, and I want you to circle things in prayer. And the first day it happened, I was to circle our home in prayer. And so God said, meet me at nine, pray around your home, pray for your children, pray for your family, pray for your relationships, pray for everything going on, and I will meet you there. I was so excited to try it, because I knew the story of, of Jericho and what happened. I said, oh, great and mighty things can happen. I cannot wait. I was so excited for that 9 o'clock a.m. appointment. And so I went out just a few minutes early because I didn't want to be late to meet with God. So I went out about 8.53 a.m. ready to meet God and to walk around, circle my home, and pray for our family. And so I wanted to make sure everything was ready for that appointment because because this was God here, and I, and I couldn't wait. You know, I don't know if you've ever, you've ever had a time where you were so excited for something, like maybe for a first date or something that you couldn't wait to do, and those butterflies are in your stomach. That's what was going on for me. So I got there and got ready to go. Well, in our backyard, we had a fenced-in backyard, and so to be able to circle around our house, I needed to get the gates open and ready to go um, so I could circle around and go through the fence to go all the way around the house. And we had two gates. And I went to open the first gate, and I realized that it was nailed shut. Seriously? And then I remembered that um, the the spring prior, our our gate was kind of flopping open, and we hadn't gotten a really good fix on it, so Dustin just simply nailed it shut. Done. (laughs) And I'm supposed to meet with God in just a few minutes and walk around our house. How is this going to work? Because you see, this fence is a six-foot-high wooden privacy fence. What am I going to do now? And I only had a few minutes. I couldn't get everything ready in time to, you know, take the nails out or do something like that. And so I didn't know what to do. So I went, and thinking I'd have some time to get, get ready, I went and opened the other gate, and that one opened fine. So I just had this one gate that I couldn't get open, and I kept looking at it and kept looking at it. Well, if you can't go through it, and you can't go under it, You can't go around it. You got to go over it. Seriously, God? Isn't there another way? So I said, all right, well, it's 9 o'clock. I got to go. I got to start circling. So I started circling. And by the time I got around to this gate that was was nailed shut, I said, all right, well, we'll go over it. But I'm wearing my dress shoes and my dress pants and my long black coat. But I said, here we go. So I found a couple of little footholds that I could just kind of carefully climb up. And I'm, I got up to the top of that six-foot-high fence. And I realized, I don't really like heights. 
I don't really like sitting up here. And there's no footholds on the way down. How am I gonna get down? I guess I have to jump. So I decided to, to put my hands down behind me and, or on the, on the fence and, and I jumped down and I cut my hand, got all bloody because of the wooden fence at the top. My coat got stuck on the top of the gate and I tumbled to the ground. It was not pretty. And so I looked at my hand though, bloodied from that jump. And I realized how small that cut was compared to Jesus' hands and his nails as he was there on the cross. And what he did for me and for so many, a little little insignificance for me on my cut, but what he did for us changed the world. And so I said, I guess I I can keep going. Because I made one circle around the house and God had told me to make seven, so I guess I can keep going because Jesus did so much more for me. So I continued to circle around the house, but when I got to the gate the second time, I took off my coat because I didn't want to have any more bodily injuries. And so I, I went and I climbed the fence again and I jumped again. And with each time that I circled the house, each time I got a little bit more graceful and, and a little more courage, and I continued to go. I kept wondering, you know, along the way, maybe I could stop at some point because no one else knew that I was doing this, except maybe my neighbor who was starting to look out the window like, really? And God. And God knew. God knew that he had put a commandment on my heart to keep circling, so I did. I kept walking, I kept walking. Get a little more tired each time, but by the fourth time I realized I was over halfway there so I could keep making it and I continued to circle and pray for my family and pray for our home and pray for our relationships that we would be strengthened. On the fifth time I got around, my neighbor's sprinklers turned on. It was early March. 38 degrees outside, 9 o'clock in the morning, your sprinklers don't need to be on. But they were sprinklers that, that had enough of shooting out that they could come onto, of course, our side. So now it's 38 degrees and I'm dripping wet from his sprinklers that were coming on. I'm thinking, really, God, this is enough. My prayer time is about over. But I continued to circle, and I finished circle seven, and I got to the top of that last jump. And I started to warm up and I started to recognize that as I stood there atop of the gate, there was no obstacle that was too big for God to handle. And that no matter what obstacle I was facing in life, God would meet me there. So I made the final jump and I brushed off my hands, both bloodied from that initial jump and and then both hands having indentations from every time that I tried to push myself up off that gate to jump down continuing to give thanks for Christ's own giving of himself for us and his call for us to follow, to go wherever God calls us to go and to be reminded that God is with us in the biggest things in life, things that we don't even think we can do by ourselves. Well, the second time I was invited to spend a week circling was just a couple weeks ago. And so I had my 9 a.m. appointments with God every morning, circling my house and our church. But the most profound day for me that week was when God invited me to circle in prayer um, the partnerships that our church has with different places right here in town, right in our neighborhood, with Grant Elementary School, with the Wesley Center Daycare and Preschool, with Chris's House of Grace for families who have been a part of domestic violence. And so I began circling in this area, and my prayers were were growing more and more fervent with each time I circled, amazed by these partnerships and what was already in place. And I I prayed for everyone who was a part of Grant Elementary School, the students, the teachers, the staff, the families, the people here who go and mentor every week, the people who are prayer partners for the staff, and asked that God would just bring about hope and possibility and care and continue to grow those partnerships so that each and every student would know Christ's light in their life. And I was empowered by a word that was given to us not too long ago from a staff member there that said that she was so thankful for this partnership with our church and their school because now nobody has to feel alone anymore. And that became my prayer for every student who goes there, that no student would have to ever think they go through life alone, that they would know that God is with them and will be with them. 
and I prayed for the Wesley Center. At that time, many of the, the, the kids and the staff were sick, and I prayed for health, that health would come upon them in ways beyond measure, and everyone would be, become healthy and well again. And I prayed for Chris's house of grace, that one day when the families would begin to move in, they would know that indeed it was a place of grace, a safe sanctuary, and they would know the love of this congregation poured out for them because Christ first loved each of you and that you can offer that love to all whom you meet. And then as I continued to circle and every, every time my prayers would grow, I was amazed that even though I was called to pray for those three particular partnerships first, I saw so many other partnerships between 4th and 12th Streets and Philip and Madison, just that small area that I was circling. So many others of which so many of you are a part. Orphan Grain Train, which allows people literally across the world to receive different resources and access to, to all kinds of food and, and clothing. You all make that possible. And Mercy Meals, so many of you have put your hands into action to create meals that literally go around the world to people in need where that might be their only meal for the day. And there's the community garden where people and families in, in, um, grow food not only for themselves but for others right here in our neighborhood. And there's the community food pantry where so many of you have given time and talents and money and resources so that our neighbors can eat. And also in the same area, there's five other churches where we are partnering together to be the body of Christ so that people know about the power of Christ for their life. And there's so many other businesses and homes, and I was amazed by the power of what could happen right here in our neighborhood when God calls us. There was one, uh, one little saying that was on the corner of a building that as I was circling really challenged my time of prayer. It says this, move in the right direction. And I thought to myself, as Christians, that's our invitation to move in the right direction. Even if we don't know which way we're called next, if we move in the right direction, move toward God, move toward loving God and loving our neighbor as God calls what things are possible. And as I finished my circling that day, then I drove by the Salvation Army, and on their marquee it said this, what you do, do for the glory of God. Wouldn't that be amazing if from the time we woke up in the morning till the time we went to bed at night, and maybe even in the middle of the night when we wake up wondering what, are we, what am I thinking about now, if we could do what we do for the glory of God. Our psalm for today invites us to do that, that with our whole heart, we are to come before the Lord and to follow the commandments that God has placed upon us. In our story from what happened at Jericho, they did the same thing. Each and every day that they circled, they were invited to do what they did for the glory of God. So when that trumpet sounded and the shout was given, God could be glorified. Friends, what would it look like for you over this next week to circle your life in prayer? To circle the obstacles you face? To circle the dreams you have? To circle the fears that are overwhelming? What would that look like for you? To know for sure that no matter what you are facing, God is coming to meet you where you are. There, there is no obstacle too big. Maybe, for example, maybe you've got a child who's really struggling right now with a teacher. What would it be like to literally maybe take out a yearbook and literally to take your finger and circle around a picture of the teacher and circle around a picture of your child and pray for that relationship and that in and through what is coming next, God will be glorified. Or maybe you're seeking a loan for something that's coming next, something that you're really, really excited about. Now don't go and circle around the bank and say, well, my preacher told me to come here and I'm going to run circles around you and they might think you're a little, little crazy. But what if you took all of that you were putting into that and find a way to circle it in prayer so that God would be glorified? Maybe you're facing a health concern right now. It's absolutely overwhelming. How can you take yourself or someone you love 
and allow yourself to be circled in prayer so that God will be glorified and that no obstacle will be too big for even God to handle with you. Maybe you're facing a decision about you or a loved one. Do I stay at home or does my loved one stay at home or do we look into a care facility? Maybe you do go out and and circle your home or a care center. Meet with God and see what it is that God has to say to you in the midst of your decisions. Or maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe the next time you go to cemetery, you literally walk circles around the grave, giving thanks for how that loved one has shaped you, has changed you, has taught you, has loved you, praying to God in the midst of the grief and the pain and the loss, and praying to God for what is yet to come, that God would be glorified. I invite us to consider how it is we can bring that which we face before the Lord. In your bulletins, you'll also notice we have um, given you a pink insert as well. And on this, there are other ways we might invite you to to consider praying this week. Some of you may want to circle if that's not your thing, or if if it is, or you want to try one of these, we invite you to do so as well. Different ways that you can pray at home that you may want to to explore um, by yourself or with family members. There's also things set up in the prayer chapel about uh, different prayer stations, coloring in prayer, or meditating, walking, um, doing prayer labyrinths. All of it is explained in the prayer chapel as different um, avenues of prayer. I don't know how God is going to be calling you into prayer over this next week, but I invite you to listen, to be bold in your prayers, and to see what it is that God has to say to you today. Because I believe God is ready to speak. Friends, whatever obstacles you are facing, you do not have to do it alone. God says, I am here to be with you, to go with you, to walk you through it, or around it, or under it, or over it. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious and holy Lord, speak to us. We know that when you speak, the world is changed. Help us to change our pace and to change our place so that just maybe we can change our perceptions as well so that we can hear you more clearly. Follow where you're leading us and go where you will have us to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.